Brakata Yahoa, Brakata Yahweh Shai, Call Halo Imla Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Barakahakwadash, which means all praises to Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham is in the name. Yahweh Shai is the name of his only begotten Son, who the world only called Jesus Christ, Barakahakwadash, means in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, on the way who worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who are preaching the gospel and truth and in sincerity, all is in charity. And, um, it's Brother Mathathi from the Great Millstone Camp to Branch on Des Moines. And, um, not sure what I'm going to title this lesson just yet, but, uh, um, it's pretty much the, the, the flavor of the week. You know, uh, different brothers, apostles, you know, elders are uh, doing lessons about, uh, how we're going to be immortal in the kingdom of heaven. You know, we're going to be, uh, uh, uh guys, we're going to be likened unto Yahweh Shai, you know, and yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Now, first scripture I want to get is Sirach 37 and 25. Now it says the days of the life of man may be numbered, but the days of Israel are innumerable, right? Going into how Israel will be immortal in the kingdom of heaven, man. I wanted to start off with this scripture because it's showing you the days of the life of man may be numbered, but the days of Israel are innumerable. So it's, it's showing you a separation. And that separation comes from the spirit of wisdom or, or, or the Holy Spirit that has been given unto us as a nation. Because when we read... um. What is that? Uh, let me see. This is Sirach 24. And I'm going to start at one. It says wisdom. See, the key thing here is wisdom. Now, we understand that the, the spirit of wisdom and the Holy Spirit are synonymous with each other. This wisdom of Solomon 9 and 17. And thy counsel who have known, except thou give wisdom and send thy Holy Spirit from above. You see, so the spirit of wisdom and the Holy Spirit are synonymous. So going back to Sirach, the 24th chapter. Verse one, it says wisdom shall praise herself and shall glory in the midst of her people. Personal pronoun in the congregation of the most high shall she open her mouth and triumph before his power. I came out of the mouth of the most high and covered the earth as a cloud. I dwelt in high places and my throne is in a cloudy pillar. I alone can pass the circuit of heaven and walked in the bottom of the deep, which we can read the same thing in Proverbs, the eighth chapter in the ways of the sea and in all the earth and in every people and nation. I got a possession, meaning that the whole world was formed through wisdom. This is the book of wisdom of Solomon. Is it 11 and one? Yep. Verse uh, 12 and one is wisdom of Solomon 12 and one for thy incorruptible spirit is in all things. You see, so wisdom formed all things. So going back to Sirach 24, it says, verse six, in the ways of the sea and in all the earth and in every people and nation, I got a possession. Why? Because wisdom formed everything. Verse seven, this is the point. With all these, I sought rest in whose inheritance shall I abide? So the creator of all things gave me a commandment and he that made me cause my tabernacle to rest and said, let thy dwelling be in Jacob and thy inheritance in Israel. You see, so the Lord gave us his ways. The Lord chose Israel to govern the earth the proper way. You see, because I'm going to read this again. Verse eight, it says, so the creator of all things gave me a commandment and he that made me cause my tabernacle to rest and said, let thy dwelling be in Jacob and thy inheritance in Israel. Because what did the Lord tell us? The Lord told us. Is it wisdom of Solomon 19? Israel was chosen. To be that top nation. And it's starting with Adam and we're going to and when Lord's will, we're going to get into that. Uh, but let me let me see if I can search this up real quick. This wisdom of Solomon 18 and four, it says, for they were worthy to be deprived of light and imprisoned in darkness. Talking about those Egyptians during the three days of darkness who had kept thy son shut up 
by whom the uncorrupt light of the law was to be given unto the world. You see, so the Lord gave us the proper way to govern and walk and, and live. Right. In order to give to the rest of the people. This is the book of Deuteronomy. Chapter four and verse five, it says, behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, my power commanded me that ye should do so in the land where the ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people for what nation is there so great who have the most high so nigh unto them. As Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, our power is in all things that we call upon him for. And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day? So this is what the nations are supposed to be saying. You see? But in this current present evil world, it is not so. Why? Because wickedness is running rampant. And that's how the Lord ordained it so that the story can be fulfilled. So now let's go into it. So now let's go to uh, Wisdom of Solomon, the first chapter. And let's start at the 11th verse. Now it says. Um, yeah, I'll start there. It says, because when you when you read up. It's speaking about the, the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts without understanding. Right. She will not uh, dwell in the malicious soul, neither be subject unto a. a, a, a um nor dwell in a body that is subject to sin, right? So this is what the uh, uh, the traits of the Holy Spirit, right? The traits of, of, of wisdom, you see? And we must walk in the spirit of that because if we don't, the Lord will take it from us. But let's, let's jump down. So verse 12, so it says, seek not death in the air of your life and pour not upon yourselves destruction with the works of your own hands. Now it's the reason why we started here. Right. Because it says, seek not death in the air of your life. Now, this is not talking about suicide in the definition of it. As you going to go hang yourself or you slitting your wrist. No, it's speaking about how a just man fall seven times will pick himself up again. But it says what a wicked man falleth into mischief. So you got guys that are that are fuck up or do something wrong and they'll continue within that wrong. You see. So they're pulling upon themselves destructions with the work of their own hands because their deeds is worthy of death. But let's keep reading. It says, for the most high made not death, neither hath he pleasure in the destruction of the living. For he created all things that they might have their being and the generations of the world were healthful and there was no poison of destruction in them, nor the kingdom of death upon the earth. For righteousness is immortal, right? Because when the most high, made everything he made everything in his proper order or, or or to function in his uh proper role now adam was given the breath of life right matter of fact i'm gonna I'm a hold that on matter of fact i'm gonna hold that salaki i'm gonna hold that second address let me go back to wisdom of solomon and finish this up verse 14 again for he created all things that they might have their being and the generations of the world were healthful and there is no poison of destruction in them, nor the kingdom of death upon the earth. For righteousness is immortal. Let's keep this in mind. For righteousness is immortal. Verse 16. But ungodly men with their works and words. This is what we were reading up here. You see, that's why we started at verse 12. For ungodly men with their works and their words. That's why he said, beware of murmuring. Right. The ear of jealousy heareth all things. He that speaketh unrighteousness cannot be hid, <laughs> right? So it says, but ungodly men with their works and words called it to them. Called what? Called death unto them, you see? For when they thought to have it their friend, they consumed to naught and made a covenant with it because they are worthy to partake with it, man. And that lines up with Isaiah, the 28th chapter, where it says what? That our people made a covenant with death. Who is death? They made a covenant with the spiritual demon, Satan. They made a covenant with his with his uh, physical counterpart, Esau, Edom. You see, to walk in the ways of wickedness. So therefore, they are worthy to partake within it. 
You see? Because let's keep reading. Jump over to chapter two, verse one. For the ungodly said, keep this in mind. These are ungodly men. For the ungodly said, reasoning with themselves, but not a right. So this is a, um, a reasoning or this is a thought without reason, right? These are thoughts without understanding. So it says, our life is short and tedious. And in the death of a man, there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave. Let's keep that in mind. For we are born at all adventure and we shall be hereafter as though we had never been. For the breath in our nostrils is as smoke and a little spark in the moving of our heart, which being extinguished, our body shall be turned into ashes and our spirit shall vanish as the soft air. And our name shall be forgotten in time and no man shall have our works in remembrance and our life shall pass away as the trace of a cloud and shall be dispersed as a mist that is driven away with the beams of the sun and overcome with the heat thereof. For our time is a very shadow that passeth away and after our end there is no returning for it is fast sealed so that no man cometh again. So this is the mentality of the ungodly, right? Verse six, come on, therefore, let us enjoy the good things that are present and let us speedily use the creatures like as in youth. Let us fill ourselves with costly wine and ointments and let no flower of the spring pass by us. Let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they be withered. Let none of us go without his part of our voluptuousness. Let us leave tokens of our joyfulness in every place for this is our portion and our lot is this. You see, so that's why Esau is all about the flesh. And this is what the serpent gave unto Eve and Eve brought it back unto Adam. And that's what brought death into the world. And we're going to uh, read into that. Right. But as it is in Proverbs, it's the same thing that was going on during the time of the flood with Cain and his uh, descendants that were. Um, matter of fact, let's just get the precept. This is a uh, Proverbs 12 and 26. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduceth them. You see? So that's what happened with the sons of God during the time of the flood. And this is what happening with the children of Israel, the sons of God today during this time. You see? Esau, Edom is seducing them with what? With the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. So forth and so on. This is what we're reading here in Wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter. And this is what the serpent gave unto Eve. And once again, Eve brought it back unto Adam, man. You see, let's jump down. Because when you read this through, right? Matter of fact, let's just keep reading. Verse 10, let us oppress the poor and righteous man. Let us not spare the widow, nor reverence the ancient gray hairs of the age. Now we understand that, you know, this could be applied to Esau Edom because look at what Esau is doing within his rulership, within his society. But let's go back into when we were governing ourselves. We had wicked rulers and, and wicked judges and wicked kings over us that did these same exact things. That's why in John, the eighth chapter, the 44 verse, it says, you are of your father, the devil, the lust of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own because he is a liar and the father of it. I'm roughly paraphrasing that, uh, 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 that scripture. You see, so this could be applied to Esau, Edom and unto the rebels of our nation. Verse 11, let our strength be the law of justice for that which is feeble is found to be nothing worth. Therefore, let us lie and wait for the righteous because he is not for our turn and he is clean contrary to our doings. He abradeth us with our offending the law and objected to our infamy, the transgression of our education. Now, once again, this could be applied to Esau, but look at the time, look at during the time of Ahab. He hated Micah. Ah. Why? Because Micah ah wasn't for his turn. Micah ah was clean contrary to his doings. Let's keep reading. Verse 13, he professes to have the knowledge of the Most High, and he called himself the child of the Lord. Just like those wicked niggas when Yahweh Shah was on the uh, the cross. If you be the if you be the son of God, come down from that. You see, so we have examples of this spirit, not only in Esau, Edom, but in our people as well. You see why? Because the ways of the wicked seduceth them. They called the works unto themselves. They are in league with the spiritual demon Satan and with the with his physical counterpart Esau, Edom. You see, 
Verse 14, he was made to reprove our thoughts. He is grievous unto us even to behold, for his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. All Israel's not Israel, right? Even Esau, man, trying to claim to be us. He abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness. He pronounces the end of the just to be blessed and maketh his boast that the Most High is his father. Let us see if his words be true and let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. Right? Did not the Romans do this? Did not the wicked scribes and Pharisees deliver them uh, unto the Romans to do this, man? You see? For if the just man be the son of the Most High, he will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. Let us examine him with despitefulness and torture that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. Let us condemn him with a shameful death, for by his own saying he shall be respected. Such things they did imagine and were deceived, for their own wickedness have blinded them. As for the mysteries of the Most High, they knew them not. Neither hoped they for the wages of righteousness, right? Righteousness is immortal. Nor discern the reward for blameless souls. For the Most High created man to be immortal. Now, he's, this is not speaking about all men. We read in the beginning of the lesson that the, the numbers, uh, uh, the days of man may be numbered. But Israel's days is innumerable. Right? So it says, for the Most High created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world and they that do hold on his side do find it. You see? So it says, through envy of the devil came death into the world. What? That goes back into the serpent. It says what? Through the woman, we all die. But the serpent beguiled Eve and Eve brought it to Adam. So you see the process? You see the trickle down effect? So it says that the Most High made man to be immortal. Now let's prove that ain't talking about every man on this earth. Now this is the book of Genesis 2. And uh, verse 7. It says, And Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai formed man of the dust of the ground, brought us out of that confusion, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So it says what? He breathed into Adam the breath of life. Let's prove what that is. This is Wisdom of Solomon, the seventh chapter. In the 24th verse, it says, For wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passes and goeth through all things by reason of her pureness. For she is the breath of the power of the Most High and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall into her, man. You see, she would not dwell in a malicious soul. You see that? But the point is, is that what? For she is the breath of the Most High. So going back to Genesis, the second chapter, Adam was given that breath. Adam was given that rulership. Adam was given that dominion over the earth. And through envy of the devil, he caused Adam to fall. You see that? Let's jump over this wisdom of Solomon 8, because it says what? He made man to be immortal. So before uh, 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 Adam partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, right? Before the sentence of death was, was given, Adam was immortal. How do we know that? This wisdom of Solomon 8 and 13. Moreover, by means of her, I shall obtain immortality and leave behind me an everlasting memorial to them that come after me. You see? So this word leads to life, man. It leads to immortality. In the book of Proverbs, the 12th chapter, the last verse, it says, in the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof, there is no death, man. You see? So if Adam would have not hearkened unto Eve, and if Eve would have not hearkened unto the serpent, the generations would have been helpful. And no, and no uh, 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 kingdom of death upon the earth. That's what we just read in Wisdom of Solomon 1 and 14. <laughs> you see but once again the will of the lord right the story had to progress it had to play out so let's go back to wisdom of solomon the eighth chapter and let's continue to read down it says um i'm a jump down uh i'll just read through i shall set the people in order and the nation shall be subject unto me to see this was going to happen in the kingdom of heaven man that immortality to come and these people are going to be subject unto us Right. Going back into the precepts we started with at the beginning. Israel was meant to govern the world. It started with Adam and that lineage of the sons of God. You see. 
It says, horrible tyrants shall be afraid when they do but hear of me. I shall be found good among the multitude and valiant in war. After I am come into my house, I will repose myself with her, for her conversation hath no bitterness, and to live with her hath no sorrow but mirth and joy. This is the point. Now, when I considered these things in myself and pondered them in my heart, how that to be allied unto wisdom is immortality. You see? And great pleasure it is to have her friendship, and then the works of her hands are infinite riches, and then the exercise of conference with her prudence, and in talking with her a good report, I went about seeking how to take her to me, for I was a witty child and had a good spirit. Yea, rather being good, I came into a body undefiled. <laughs> That's that wisdom, right? Verse 21. Nevertheless, when I perceived that I could not otherwise obtain her, except the most I gave her me, and that was a point of wisdom also to know whose gift she was, I prayed unto the Lord and besought him with my whole heart, I said, and it goes into the ninth chapter. But the point being is that wisdom is immortal, man. And that's what was given unto Adam. You see? But what did Adam do? Now, let's go to 2nd Edris 3. And let's start at 4. Once again, this is all written. This is so the story of the Lord may progress, right? So this is 2nd uh, Edris 3 and 4. O Lord, who bearest rule, thou speakest at the beginning when thou didst plant the earth and that thyself alone and commandest the people and get letting you know that Adam wasn't the only person. <laughs> and commandest the people so it was a lot of them there verse 5 and gave us a body unto adam without soul which was the workmanship of thy hands right and it's not saying that he didn't have a spirit it's saying that he didn't have the breath of life he didn't have the wisdom he didn't have the holy spirit in him yet that's why in genesis the second chapter he brought him out of that dust out of that confusion you see that so he gave adam the proper way to govern he set adam up on high and gave us a body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thy hands, and did his breathe into him the breath of life, and he was made living before thee. And thou ledest him into paradise, which thy right hand had planted, before ever the earth came forth. And unto him thou gavest commandment to love thy way, which he transgressed. What is what is what is a transgression? Let's prove that. Salaki, I didn't mean to uh, do that. But let's prove what a transgression is. It's the book of 1 John. Is it 3 and 4 or 5 and 3? 3 and 4. It's 1 John 3, verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So the commandment that was given unto Adam was not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And what did he end up doing? He transgressed that, meaning he sinned. You see? Which he transgressed and immediately Thou appointest death in him and in his generations of whom came nations, tribes, people and kindreds out of number. You see that? Because why? It says what? Immediately the Lord appointed death in him. This is the book of Romans. Chapter six and verse 23. It says, for the wages of sin is death. <laughs> right? Immediately the Lord appointed death. But the gift of the Most High is eternal life through Yahweh Shahamashiach, our Lord. The gift of the Most High, and it starts with what? With the Holy Spirit, with the Spirit of Wisdom. That's why we read in Wisdom of Solomon 8, chapter, the last verse. It says that was a point of wisdom to know whose gift she was. You see? So Adam was gifted that gift of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Wisdom, in order for him to be immortal. But once again, the story had to play out. So from there, let's go to uh, the fifth chapter. Let's jump back to the fifth chapter. Let's start at the sixth verse. It says, because, matter of fact, let's prove this real quick. It says, for the rages of sin is death. And we read in 2nd Edris, the third chapter, that, that he appointed death in him and in his generations. Now, when we read the seventh chapter, Let's start at 10. It says, and I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so is Israel's portion. So Israel's portion is to go through the dangerous, the dangerous place. Go through the narrow place. We got to go through the straight in order to get to the broad, right? This is the condition of the battle. This is our portion. Why is that? Verse 11. 
because for their sakes I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. <laughs> right. Verse 12. Then were the interests of this world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. For the interests of the elder world were wide and sure and brought immortal fruit. Did not Is that not what we read in Wisdom of Solomon in the first chapter? You see, verse 14, if then they that labor, uh, Salakia, if then, if then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, they can never receive those things that are laid up for them. So this is what the angel was expounding unto Ezra. Now, as we read down, we understand that Ezra was blue, right? Let's jump down to verse 46. I answered then and said, because this is Ezra according to his understanding during that time. He didn't have the understanding of Yahweh Shai, that what, what we're going to uh, uh, go into, right? Once again, all these things have to manifest itself on the earth first, <laughs> right? And the Wadi Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. Once again, it says, Who have known the counsel of the Lord, except I'll give wisdom and send thy Holy Spirit from above. The Wadi Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai for allowing us to understand the uh, 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 this walk, man. From Genesis 1 all the way to uh, 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 the destruction of you know, uh, uh, of America, the downfall of Esau, Edom, all the way into the first day in the kingdom, man. When holy Jerusalem is going to come down out of heaven. When those elect men are going to go around the world and rounding up those elites, man. In the different places they're going to be hid, according to Amos 9. And slap fetters of iron upon their ass, according to Psalms 149. And sever out continual employment, according to the book of Ezekiel. I believe it's the uh, the 39th chapter, if I'm not mistaken, man. <laughs> man, but it, uh, it's locking. Verse 46. I answered then and said, this is my first and last saying, that it had been better not to have given the earth unto Adam or else when it was given him to have restrained him from sinning. So this is Ezra's like, man, you could have stopped Adam from doing that. But once again, the Lord's uh, uh, purpose had to happen, man. Right. The Lord's story had to fulfill itself out. Verse 47. For what profit is it for for men now in this present time to live in heaviness and after death to look for punishment? Meaning because what we're going to continue to die, come back, die, come back, die, come back. <laughs> right. Because we're in this body of sin. That's what was, that was. War, that's what was ordained when Adam transgressed. Verse 48. Oh, thou Adam, what has thou done? For though it was thou that sinned, thou art not fallen alone, fallen ones. Genesis, the sixth chapter. Nepal. That's where you get the Nephilim from. But anyway, but we all that come of thee. For what profit is it unto us if there be promised us an immortal time? Whereas we have done the works that bring death. You see, so Ezra's is lamenting. He like, man, how how we going to get saved? How we going to come into the immortal time? How we going to get into the kingdom when when we when we doing these wicked works? Right. But as you read down, the angel told him this is the condition of the battle. Right. What is the battle? Let's go now. This is the book of Romans five. And matter of fact, I'll start at one. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with the most High through our Lord. Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Right. So we got to battle this flesh according to the Holy Spirit. We have to deny ourselves of the lust and the deeds that this flesh wants to do, man. You see, this is the battle. Verse two, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of the Most High. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope and hope maketh not a shame because the love of the heavenly father is shed abroad on all hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, right? It says by the Holy Spirit, which is given unto us and it was given unto us through Yahweh Shah sacrifice. But we're going to get we're going to get into that. Verse six, for when we were yet without strength in due time, Yahweh Shah died for the ungodly. For that's and see, and this is the understanding of, of, of what Ezra was, was lamenting about, man. Through Yahweh Shah, we're going to receive that immortal time. Through Yahweh Shah, we're going to get the victory. Verse 7 For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, 
Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But the mo and, and look at that, man. It says scarcely for a righteous man would one die. But but Yahweh gave his life while we was full in wickedness, man. Verse eight. But the Most High commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Yahweh died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to the Most High by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. It says, And not only so, but we also joy in the Most High through our Lord Yahweh Shahamashiach, by whom we now receive the atonement. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, that one man being Adam, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned, <laughs> right? For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Now, when you read that, it's going into uh, uh, sin was in the world before the law was given to Moses, because the law was oral before it was given unto Moses, you see? But where there's no law, there's no transgression. But let's keep reading. Verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. And we're going to get into that, man. <laughs> you see? But it says what? Death reigned in, 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 in all men, even men who didn't do the same sin as Adam did, man. Right? You still die, though. Let's verse 15. It says, but not as the offense. So also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of the most high and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Yahweh Shahamashiach, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. <laughs> Out of all those sins we, we committed, man, through Yahweh Shine, through his sacrifice, all those things are forgiven. Verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. Did not we read and say righteousness is immortal? It says they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Yahweh Shahamashiach. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. So because Yahweh Shah walked perfect, we are perfect through him. You see? But we got to continue to walk in the faith. We got to continue to walk in the word. We got to continue to be joined unto, the, uh, uh, unto this book. Verse 19, for as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law answered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound, man. So that the grace and mercy of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah may be manifested unto his creation, man. Let's get that. Um, is, that is that the fifth chapter? Salaki, brothers, bear with me. It's a precept in my mind, and I ain't got my book next to me. Um, <laughs> let's see. Because I know in Ecclesiastes it says, there's not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. How is this one worded, man? I'm mad. How is this one worded? Um, whew, 70 of them. All right. Uh, Is this a little among faithful? Who? This is the second address eight. Second address eight. Second address eight. 
and 35 for in truth there is no man among them that be born but he hath dealt wickedly and among the faithful there is none which have not done amiss for in this O lord thy righteousness and thy goodness shall be declared if thou be merciful unto them which have not the confidence of good works man you see so we did all that wickedness but what through the sacrifice and through the faith of our lord yahweh shai we are brought back man you see so let's go back back in uh romans 5 and let's read 20 again moreover the law entered right it was given to moses that the offense might abound i keep that in mind because we're going to hit a key point in another scripture but where sin abounded grace did much more abound man <laughs> so that mercy is man that as sin hath reigned unto death even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by yahweh shahamashiach our lord right so from there let's jump over to first corinthians the 15th chapter and let's start at uh let's see what they say 24 21 for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Yahweh Shai shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Yahweh Shai the first fruits, afterward they that are Yahweh Shai's at his coming. You see? So everything in its proper order, right? But let's jump. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to keep reading through. It says, Then cometh the end. When he shall have delivered up the kingdom to the Most High, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. <laughs> you see? So the last enemy is to be destroyed is death, right? And, and, and once that's done, Yahweh Shah is going to put all things under uh, his feet. And then he's going to put himself underneath the most high. Right. So the most high can 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 have that omnipotency, man. But let's jump down. Let's jump down a verse uh, for time's sake. Let's jump down to verse 45. It says, and so it was written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. Right. He breathed the breath of life into him and he was made living before the Lord. But what he do? He transgressed that way. Right. And it says, the last Adam, being our Lord Yahweh Shai, was made a quickening spirit. So through Yahweh Shai, we are brought back from those offenses. We are made alive again. We're brought back into the presence of Yahweh through our Lord Yahweh Shai and his sacrifice, man. Verse 46, how be it that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. Yahweh Shah said, I am from above and ye are from beneath. He said, ye are of this world. I am not of this world. Roughly paraphrasing, right? Verse 48, as is the earthy, so are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. That's why it says that our conversation is in the heavens. That word conversation goes back into uh, our, our citizenship. You see? That's why it says the carnal man, the earthy man cannot receive the things of the spirit because they are spiritually discerned. But that's the gift of the Holy Spirit that's coming down from the heavens. That's been gifted unto us, man. Verse 49. As we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Right? Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High, neither do a corruption inherit incorruption. So this body, we're not taking this body into the kingdom, man. That's why it's written. Philippians 3 and 21, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. And that's what we read here. Right. And the first John, the third chapter says we don't know uh, how he's going to be when he come, but we shall be like him. So we're going to be in those new bodies, man. You see, because this body, this corrupt flesh cannot inherit in corruption as we just read verse 51 behold i show you a mystery we shall all not all sleep we shall not all die but we shall all be changed how shall i said there be some standing here that shall not taste death verse 52 
in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, so when we're changed like unto the Lord's uh, glorious body, right? And this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. You see? And that's what we're waiting for because Yahweh Shah already conquered death. This is Isaiah 25 and 8. He will swallow up death. That's Yahweh Shah, right? In victory. And the Lord power will wipe away tears from off all faces and the rebuke of his people shall he take away from off all the earth for Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah hath spoken it, man. And this is what our Lord Yahweh Shah is coming back to do, man. Hosea 13 and 14. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from my eyes, man. Those laws going to be written in us, man. And we're not going to die. As it is written in Revelation, the 21st chapter. Let's grab that. Revelation 21 and 4. We just read this uh, in Isaiah the 25, right? He shall wipe away all tears from all faces. This uh Revelation 21 and 4. And the most I shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, their eyes, Israelites, and there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Let's go back. So it says, uh, verse 54 again, 1 Corinthians 15, 54. It says, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death. Where is thy sting? <laughs> oh, grave, where is thy victory? You see? How can you how can you read this and a nigga still say, oh, yeah, yeah, we ain't going to. Nigga, what? Verse 56. The sting of death is sin. We just read that in Romans uh, 6. The wages of, uh, of sin is death. Right? It says when Adam transgressed, immediately death was appointed in him, man. Eh? So it says the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. Paul said, I had not known sin except by the law. That's going back to that Romans five. It says what the law entered in that sin may abound, but where grace is, it abound much more. <laughs> right. Verse 57. But thanks be to Yahweh, which giveth us the victory through our Lord. Yahweh Shahamashiach, man. You see that? Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, man. You see? So our labor is not in vain. We're, we're working towards immortality, you know? And don't let the unbelief of any person hinder you from that hope, from that faith, man. You see? So... That's all the precepts I had written down, you know, um, Lord willing, you know, I hope this was edifying. The water Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. I'm going to give all praises, honor, glory to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Barachah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers who are preaching the gospel in truth and sincerity, always in charity. Hey, Shalom.